is what hundreds of Ukrainians saw and heard as they fled their homes. Maybe it's why so many escaping Ukraine went to the Suffolk countryside to seek refuge. Families like Alina's have uprooted their lives, leaving behind careers and friends and family to seek safety from Russian invaders. My mom in Kiev and uh, my grandma, only grandma stayed in Kupiansk. Uh, and a window, she live in house like this, uh, two stairs, steps, and in all uh, windows was broken from shooting bomb. Alina's husband Alexander and her two children, only five and two years old, have started a new life in Suffolk. Uh, I am so lucky because I don't see this uh, blood or died. Uh, bodies because I was in <laughs> not Ukraine when war started and I yeah. live out quickly but uh, my families and uh, my children and uh, family who lived in occupation it's so scared. In Ukraine Alina worked at a bank but now she is a cleaner. She works for a cleaning company in Halesworth, ironing, folding and washing sheets to provide for her family. Before arriving in the safety of rural Suffolk, Alina was out of the country when the war began. She had to journey to her home, that was now a war zone, to reach her husband and two children. Uh, Kupiansk was in occupation already and, and my and I must cross the line of front. It's uh, not uh, not clever, <laughs> but... Were you scared? Uh, not uh, so, because uh, my children was uh, in, in here. <laughs> and it's not scary if you have a children on occupied, occupied territory mm -hmm. and I must cross this line of front. It was be spe specific, but... For me, when I was alone, it uh, was funny, like a uh, joke, <laughs> because you don't understand what's happened and don't see uh, blood, many. Uh, but uh, about children, it was very scared. Uh, I was this feeling, it's a panic attack, and uh, 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 from scared, and uh, this very bad feelings and I don't want to feel this again. <laughs> Alina was in Pakistan on a work trip when the war broke out and had to travel over 2,000 miles to reach her family. Her children would sleep in the bathtub as protection from bombs and earthquakes caused by army machinery. So many noises from Russian technique uh, and uh, she is scared and uh, uh, little ache earthquake you know when a technic uh, mm. ra run all time it's uh, yeah like this mm. heavy tank and and armor and uh, machines it's many noise and vibration of uh, uh, yes for so many ukrainians it's the peace and quiet in areas like this that allow them to forget the chaos back home Rachel and her husband are one of many who provided a safe haven for Ukrainian families. We first met Anna face to face when we picked her up at Gatwick Airport, her and her son. And what was that like? Did you recognise her straight away? No, as we sat in the arrivals, I suddenly thought, oh, actually, people's pictures that they, when they take pictures, and we'd exchange lots of sort of photos and stuff as well. But we suddenly re realised that seeing somebody face to face is quite different to seeing somebody um, from a photo. But the realities of hosting soon became clear. Yeah, so we um, completely underestimated the costs with, with Anna. Um, and it's not 
not um so it's it's not the food so anna brought her her own food from day one and natalie has as well so it wasn't the day-to-day -day living costs but it was just the 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 time um go so anna didn't have a car so every appointment we had to take her to an appointment which was absolutely fine and you know we I, we knew we'd be doing that but i hadn't really factored in the the extra petrol and although you get the thank you payment from the the government the 350 pounds a month that takes a good six to eight weeks before it kicks in because it's paid in arrears and they have to have been in the country for four weeks uh, for a full month before you get it so if it's a part month you don't get it until the following month Anna showed Rachel photos of her hometown when it was under occupation. The street that he lived on, at the end of the street, was a military, not a base, but a military, like, um, depot, I guess. And that did get bombed, so she showed pictures of that, and that then brought home how close everything was, really, and how real things is, because when you see stuff on the telly, and even on social media, it doesn't, there's still that disconnect. But then actually seeing pictures that somebody has taken on their phone, a bit like, you know, holiday pictures, but obviously they weren't holiday pictures, but it's, yeah, it made it much more real. Um, and the impact it had had on people's lives as well. I think that, um, and how many people's lives. Around 56% of Ukrainian refugees can't speak English well enough to get a job in the UK. It's a huge issue as many Ukrainians are now hired for jobs they never dreamed of doing back home. Rachel's first guest, Anna, now lives in Framlingham with her teenage son. She didn't want to be filmed as she was self-conscious of her English skills. I want to explain. I, I want to explain that um, I feel bad. Like I don't know. I have the good um, job, good position, good material status in Ukraine, and then I come here. I feel uh, like uh, homeless <laughs> because your government helped me. I, I don't like that feelings mm -hmm. for me. Maybe somebody like I don't like it. <laughs> She relies on financial support from the government to pay her bills. I uh, have universal credit. Mm -hmm. I, I can't have the salary which uh, no, uh, don't use universal credit. Mm -hmm. I, I can't support me and my son, myself. Mm -hmm. I need the uh, help mm -hmm. yeah, from government. It, it, that's for me it's not good anna made the decision to leave ukraine when her home was heavily damaged by a russian bomb she also wanted to get out of the country before her son turned 18 to avoid him being recruited into the ukrainian army um the biggest problem anna had was when she was leaving ukraine right at the start when she was going to rome um so she drove from kiev to rome to her sister's was her son, although he was 15 at the time, he looked a lot older. So at the at the border, leaving Ukraine, they, they were held up a bit while they were checking that Misha was actually able to leave because if he'd have been over 18, he wasn't able, wouldn't have been able to leave. Oh, why is that? Because uh, the boys and anybody, any males over 18 had to stay um, in case they needed to fight. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, OK. Do you agree with that? Um, I think it's no different than we had conscript in the First and Second World Wars, so, mm -hmm. so yeah. Anna's son's education is a big reason why she wants to make living in England work for her family. I like that uh, my son likes study here <laughs> because uh, um, in the if we compare his study in Ukraine, uh, in here he enjoyed. Maybe um, we uh, have a good uh, level of education in Ukraine, but uh, he feel more relaxed. Um, I don't know how to explain. Um, 
The teachers not press them that they need to study. After being in the UK for a year now, Anna has come to notice some big differences. A big difference between writing, for example. Mm -hmm. I can rent a flat in Kiev for 300 pounds a month with bills. (laughs) (laughs) And here we can... In, not in London, in Framlingham, I pay three time, times more. A year on since fleeing Ukraine, Alina and her family are settling into their new life. But it doesn't mean they have forgotten what they left behind. Alina misses her mother, grandma and aunt, who are still in Ukraine. She so part of Russian body soldiers on her land and it's a smell, it's uh, good, uh, not good, bad. Mm. She have no tra- traumatic syndrome, you, you know, and when she uh, go to job, she uh, job in kid, kids garden, uh, she uh, saw the building and uh, go uh, so the he, her telephone and uh, next time no building bomb <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's so extreme and i say them leave out please but you know we have this our uh, house and uh, job and all life we don't can alina spoke of the famine ukraine went through in 1932 known as holodomor when thousands of ukrainians died at the hands of russian leaders Alina's grandmother was a survivor. We are Ukrainian. We don't know why you must love USSR. It was be very cruel politics in our country. It was Holodomor in 1933. My grandma uh, has uh, nine children. After Holodomor, uh, she stand only seven. It's it's terrible. And uh, we know we are Ukrainian and we uh, voted about our uh, politics. It makes time with her family all the more important. It is a a once-in-a-lifetime experience for Rachel, and she reminisces on her time with Anna. Um, One of the things that I realise that I say a lot when I'm talking about stuff is lovely. So Anna who always used to say, oh, lovely, (laughs) which she reckoned that she'd picked up from me. So um, I think cooking, cooking slightly differently um, and eating differently. um, Yeah. Anna still feels she needs more time to get used to living in the UK and the differences it brings. Uh, It's difficult and uh, now I don't feel that I'm um, okay and can relax. No, I don't feel yet that I can um, feel myself like at home. (laughs) I don't know (laughs) how it is. Do you think you'll feel relaxed in time, or do you think you'll always feel a bit, you know? I think that we need time, because I have a big uh, problem with uh, language, Mm -hmm. and I can't get uh, the same job Mm -hmm. here. She remains feeling unsettled despite living and working in the country for over a year. Maybe if I can have a material stat- status, mm-hmm. not be- not uh, worse than in Ukraine, maybe then I can relax, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because your country is uh, different from us mm-hmm. and we need to... Uh, learn new rules, new laws, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, your mentality, and. Uh... 
but things are slightly different for Alina. She prefers her way of life in the UK. This. And we now we're happy we living here. Yeah, yes, so happy because um, even we stayed in Ukraine, level of life so low because inflation, war, uh, people so heavy life because if you don't uh, have your own, your, your house, your house uh, was destroyed and you must pay for new house in Ukraine and uh, for a job uh, less money and it's a bad situation because it's good for us uh, we live in here now as of the beginning of 2023 data provided by the government to hosts shows over 1200 visas have been issued by the home office to ukrainian refugees in suffolk alina and anna are only two examples of what it has been like to uproot lives and start again in an unfamiliar place Families like Alina's and Anna's have started to find their way in the UK, but there's no doubt it's clear they want to return home and hope there is an end in sight to the ongoing war.